Coach, general thoughts on getting back to the national semifinals? Yeah, you're basically pumped up. I mean, it's uh, <clears throat> in a year that has been as tumultuous as this one. I don't think there's a lot of people in the nation that would have thought that our kids would be in this position. Uh, fortunately for us, our kids thought they were capable and don't really care what other people think. Uh, and I just think when you look at all the guys that we graduated, which is good. I mean, that's our job. We're a university. We're supposed to do that. Uh, and all the injuries we've sustained, I think the fact that each guy continues to step up and give whatever he has to give, his heart, his soul, his effort to family, uh, makes my heart really, really first in the problem. How many of your original starting 22 started today? I really don't want to do the numbers, to be, to be yeah. honest with you. I, I don't know. Um, I, I do know that We've had a total of 108 guys injured for a week or more throughout the season. I know our last regular season game, we started our 20th starter on offense alone for 11 positions. I know that there are only six guys that have started every game this season. And uh, I know that our guys continue to step up, which is why we're sitting here happy today. Glenn, whose inspiration was it to... Uh, Pat, how are you? Good. Hey, did you use my office today? Uh, no, I walked the same way. All right, go ahead. Whose inspiration uh, was it to activate number 81 today and have him immediately block a punt? Uh, you know, that's uh, Wolfgang. Did Wolf block it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wolfgang Dvorak. If that's not a great name, I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right, we got two great ones. Euless Payne and Wolfgang Dvorak. Both awesome football names. Wolfgang is a guy who's ridiculously talented. Just a freshman. Just turned 18 and uh, tremendously uh, athletic. What I love about, about Wolf is he never traveled to a single game this year until it was playoff times with the trim down roster. And uh, I think that's a function of a few things, certainly him being ready to step up when called upon. Uh, but it also speaks to, to the youth. And, and we have a guy who's a freshman who's been here for three months on campus, and he can make a big time play like that. Uh, it makes you feel pretty happy, not just today, but about the future, too. Well, and you expect games at this juncture to be close. I mean, what, what was the key today to, to you know, dominating really all three phases? Well, I, I, don't, I, can, I think if you honestly look at our last. <clears throat> Four games, we've we've clicked at times, but we haven't been consistent feeding off of each other. The last time we played a game like this was probably a month and a half ago versus Bethel, and um, it's it's sometimes tough to get in a rhythm when you have so many moving parts going in and out. But as trite as it is to say, I just really believe at the end of the day, it's their minds and hearts that won this thing today. The the buzz in the locker room before the game was palpable. And you knew something great was going to happen. It felt very much like when we had an opportunity in the third round last year to play St. John Fisher, and we beat them by a very similar score. And it also, I think, is a testament to we learned our first year, our first year in the playoffs. Uh, I don't think a lot of teams thought we'd be there. We went three games deep, and we ended up losing in the third round. But we, what we learned from that was we had some mental fatigue because our kids had never played that many games before. And in building the program, we try to make sure that we don't peak too early. Uh, I don't like to use a baseball adage, but if you look at the Yankees, they're not necessarily playing their best baseball in April uh, when they are playing good baseball, but they usually get better as the season goes on. And, and so we, I think we've done a better job kind of tempering the beginning of the season, and uh, certainly it's paying dividends now because we're on an upward swing. Well, and the uh, quarterback wasn't feeling too sprightly, I guess. Did you hear the story? Yeah, he didn't get any sleep last night. He was uh, he was puking all night long, and he came to dinner breakfast this morning. He was he was in our offices at about 8 a.m. and uh, he said, "Coach, I can't keep anything down." So I'm playing, but just want to let you know, <laughs> I can't keep anything down. So we tried to get him three or four saltines, and he kept those down, and that's that's the fuel he played on today. So you can you can say he fed off each other. That's what he did today. No, 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 not the first. I believe the third, but the first. Most time. The, the first boom, boom, and there's a difference. There's a block punt that, that you kind of block it, and, you know, it goes around, but there's a visceral feeling when you get that boom, boom, and that's what we got today, and it certainly helps spark us. Well, can you talk a little bit about your defensive effort today? I mean, obviously you had a lot of big plays up there. And a huge test in front of us. If you look at their offense, uh, you know, 450 yards or whatever it was a game and, and running the ball.
and what terrified me going into the game was if you look at their first playoff game, this is crazy. Their first playoff game, in a usual game, you will have anywhere from 12 to 15 possessions per team, okay, with the new clock rules. It used to be 14 or 15. In that first playoff game, Washington and Lee had seven possessions, and Hobart had seven possessions. That's crazy. And it really speaks to how a team, if you allow them to stay on track, up on the chains, whatever you want to say, second and sixes, third and twos, opportunities to go for it on fourth down, that's where this Hobart team, in our opinion, was lethal. And getting first down productivity, we can sit here and say, hey, we only allowed three of 13 third downs, and that's great. But it stems from productivity on first down. And I think our defense, first and foremost, did a good job stopping the run. We didn't maybe get as much pressure as we thought we would, but credit Hobart as well. You can't always get that pressure if the team has a staunch run game coming in as they did. We get Mike to talk about stopping their run game and. Um, you know, just like Coach said, coming in this game, we knew they were a great running offense, very talented team, especially offensively. Some big athletes at running back. Uh, the old line was also very talented. Excuse me. Um, but you know, we pride ourselves on stopping the run. You know, we're a three-four high-pressure defense, and we're gonna try to run, but we're gonna try to stop the run, get you into a passing situation. So that was that was the mentality coming into the game today. Brenton, you uh, you went over a thousand yards today, right? Uh, on that last drive. Um, you guys struggled a little bit in running the ball in the first half, but you really topped some nice runs in the second. What, what, what was the difference? Uh, I think it was just that we kept at it. I mean, uh, as we continued to score and as we the score kept going up, they kind of started to tire on us. And our line of scrimmage, our offensive line just kept plowing away at them and moving the line of scrimmage. And having our wide receivers did a great job blocking it up, uh, on the perimeter. and. Fullbacks did a great job, so just continuing to wear them out and break them down. Hey, Dan, can you talk a little bit quickly just about the offensive game plan going in and then uh, the, the PAT that was blocked and you were just kind of sitting there, it came right to your hands. You can you know, laugh on it now, but in reality, that's, your that's, mic, guys. that's kind of the day it was for you guys. It seemed like you had to break it down. Uh, yeah, uh, our offensive game plan, usually every week, is we try to pound the ball and uh, we'll take some deep shots uh, if we see that we have something, but uh, our offensive line does such a great job running the ball, so why change it up? And uh, <clears throat> earlier this year we had uh, a kick block, and I actually caught it, and I wasn't really sure what the rule was, or and so I talked to coach, and he was like, well, you just go ahead and make a play. So uh, that just kind of, that was the first thing that popped in my head, and I scooped it up, and a lot of green in front of me, so. Dan, you were, uh, you had five first downs catches. Uh, six catches overall over 100 yards. You, it seemed like you were open all day long. Yeah. Um, well, I just think um, they're, they're a cover three team, so it allowed us to get uh, some routes underneath. And uh, Matt did a great job throwing me the ball. I mean, he was on he was on target all day. And what's great about a guy like Matt is he's so easy to trust. And I know if I run my route, uh, the ball will be there. Jeannie, can you talk a little bit about the, the effort in the secondary day? I mean, two picks, you basically kept their offense in check most of the day. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that we played a stout game. Um, a few a few of our calls, we, you know, it, it was a blown call here or there for, for us. But, I mean, I mean, we had to stop there, um, there, uh, there. running game, so, I mean, um, I th think that we played um, a good uh, team effort in, uh, in our game. Yeah. And really, when the ball's in the air, I and mean, that's the nice thing, I think um, when you see the ball in the air and you have the confidence in guys like Chinny and some of those other D-backs, I'm not going to say you feel as comfortable that we'll come away with it as they will, but... These guys can cover a whole lot of ground, and uh, they play very, very unified today, so there weren't a whole lot of vertical scenes. Glenn, you guys gave a lot of attention to that tackle from the 90. Uh... Wouldn't you? <laughs> 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 yeah, he, he's a very good football player, and uh, he's a senior and has played. No, 90? 
Sophomore. Sophomore. Oh, Marcus. Let's just call him a sophomore. <laughs> wow. Tyree is uh, he's a fantastic football player. Uh, what we tried to do when the, when the question was asked of Brenton of what was the difference in the run game as the game went on, figuring out where he was and using uh, tight end trades to go away from him and using uh, different double team blocks. When a guy is a really dynamic player, the last thing you want to do is give him the same look. So when you can block out with a tackle and then double down with a tight end and chip and give him those different looks, it, it hopefully keeps him guessing a little bit more. But uh, he, he's a tremendous talent. And the one you did not see today, because he got hurt on the first play of the game, was Devin Worthington, who personally I thought he might have been their best football player on their team. And uh, he was number five. And on the first play of the, off, uh, their, their first defensive play, after we blocked the punt, they blitz him all the time from the weak side. And our tackle got on him. And unfortunately for Devin and for the team, uh, he wasn't able to return. But I think that might have changed the dynamic a little bit because they do get away with a lot on defense by bringing that weak side guy. And you know what? No teams that we saw wanted to put a tight end on him into the boundary. So. He runs free quite a bit, and I think uh, them not having him allowed us maybe a little bit more liberties in our run game to start formationing them and, and focus on one guy instead of two or three. Mike, he's a fifth-year guy. He's been here through this whole era. What, I think, what is it, 40, 49, 4 now? And can you just talk about where, where we are today and just everything you've seen since your first day here on campus? Uh, yeah, you know, from where we came my first year to where we are now, you know, the, the buildings, the facilities, the team, all the mentality has grown, all the new guys have came in and stepped up and really followed in the footsteps of the people that laid that foundation, you know. A lot of the seniors that graduated last year, you know, um, coaches, coach is his first recruiting class, you know, we, we, we really tried to let, let these young guys know how, how he wanted this program ran and, and, and how we were going to go about doing things, doing things the right way, doing, making sure we do the little things, and uh, it's, uh, it's it's really caught fire, and you know everyone's buying into the program, and it's really great to see. Coach, um, I, I know you don't know who you're going to play next week yet, and where the game's going to be, but do you prepare for a semifinal this year any differently than you did last year? Given, I mean, given the fact you went through the experience lines on the road. Sure, we're going to prepare differently, and I think that's what experience affords us. Um, it doesn't entitle us to feel comfortable, but it does give us a pretty good benchmark of if we want to be playing at that level, what we need to do. And you're right, I don't know who we're going to play or where we're going to play them, but... Uh, Right now, our main focus is on keeping this family together as long as we possibly can. And I really don't care who we play. I don't care if we play in a cornfield in Alabama somewhere. Uh, we're just ridiculously blessed to have earned another week keeping this group together.